All right, welcome back. Today we'll be continuing our look at the Oshkosh Striker Global Series, but the pump panel. I'll go over its uses, benefits, and what all these knobs and buttons will do. So stay tuned. Okay, so right now our driver is doing our morning check. He's basically simulating as if he's on scene. Because he has no firefighters, he's connected his nozzle directly to the discharge. He's running um, a supply line from the hydrant into the truck. And he's just running it as if um, he's on scene and making sure everything is running uh, correctly for the shift. Okay, so this is an Oshkosh Striker 3000 gallon. Um, a way you can tell how much gallons there are on the truck is if there's three tires, like you can see on this truck, then that's 3,000 gallons of water. If there was only two tires, you could see, then that would be 1,500 gallons of water. And if there was four tires, two in the front, two in the back, that would be 4,500 gallons of water. And it makes sense because one gallon of water is about 8.35 pounds. So this truck has 3,000 gallons of water. That would be 25,000 gallons of water. So, I mean, that's a lot of water. You need suspension and good tires to be able to drive that amount of weight around the airport. Alright, so this is the pump panel itself. Um, this tells you how much PSI, so it's preset at 120, that's where this triangle is telling you. Um, the RPM is here, so you don't want this to go over 1500. Say you have a long lay or you, you're at a brush fire or you're using small diameter hose lines, um, this thing could really start stressing out your pump. And if you get way over this, your 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 pump and your truck's not going to be happy. So you want to keep it below 1500. Monitor this at all times, and then also monitor your PSI and have communication with uh, your firefighters on the hand line to see if they need more or less pressure. Um, this is to tell you how much foam you have. This is to tell you how much water you have. This is to tell you if you need to blow down. So after the you're done with the emergency and you used foam, then you would press this up. It would it would open up your valves and you could um, clean out all that foam inside of the lines. And then this is just to brighten or dim this um, this screen. And then here's your gas, your oil, um, your temperature, and your battery. All right, so this is to turn on the pump panel itself. So once you press this button, you're telling the truck that you want this pump panel to control the truck versus inside the cab. This is to tell you to turn, um, you're shutting down the, the, the actual tank. So because this is lit, that means that the water in the tank is being untouched and he's using the water from the hydrant. Press this down for three seconds, this will give you water. Press this down for three seconds, that's foam. These will tell you which gauge you want big. So right now it's PSI. So this PSI gauge is big. And if you press down, then they would switch and this RPM um, gauge would go up here. And then this is to, um, you crank this up or you press this and it ups your, your PSI, how much pressure you're giving. Um, and then this is the preset. And then this is the idle. So the pump is still on, but it just hits it to idle. This tells you how much water you have in the tank. It goes by eighths. It'll start blinking and then it'll go to quarter tank and so forth. All right, so this is the relief valve. So the relief valve, you can turn this knob and preset the whole truck, how much pressure you want in the whole truck. So we have it at 240 PSI because we need those big turrets to have enough pressure to shoot out and reach the target. Um, but if you were to turn this off and say you had hand lines out and for some reason, the say you have two hand lines out and the one hand line shuts off then that surge from shutting off that line is going to come back and the other hand line is going to feel it. That's only if this is in the off position. Um, however, if it's, um, and it surges over your preset um, 
pressure. So let's say it's preset at 150. If my one hand line shuts down, but it causes a surge for some reason, and it goes 160 PSI, that extra PSI will get bled out into the intake side of the pump so that your other hand line won't feel that pressure surge when they're on the fire. Okay, so starting from the right side, this is your foam um, pump. So it's a piston pump. You would connect down here um, um, from your um, your hose lines, and you could you could use it as a, a suction to suck water, uh, suck foam into the the tank of the foam pump. This one has two hundred. Oh uh, no, this one has four hundred gallons of foam in it. Um, and then you would turn. Flick this switch, pull this knob, pull this knob, and you would commence um, your filling of your foam. This is our supply line again. Like I said, you would turn this up, and it would give you water directly into your pump for operations from the hydrant. This is your centrifugal pump. This is uh, intake if you were going to use a, a large supply line, if you are going to draft from a lake or something. And you would press this button to prime that, um, prime that pump. So that get the air out and then once it's primed, then you could continue using that water from that static water source. This is just your regular fill. So let's say that I'm just, my operation's done, my tank is empty. This, I would connect my, this line, I would connect the two and a half line into here. And then it would fill up directly into the tank. I would pull this up. Um, and then this one is fill from draft. So if I wanted to fill my tank, so let's say right now it's going to directly um, to the pump. I could crack this valve and it would relieve some of that water and I would steal it to fill up my tank. However, you have to be careful when you're doing this because you have firefighters on the hand line in a working fire. So you don't want to steal too much where it messes up the pressure that they're receiving on their end. So you just want to crack it a little bit so that you can top off your water if you need to. And then you would shut it back down and continue the operations. Okay, so you just seen that water overflowing. The truck is made to overflow like that when it's full. He was running from the hydrant and he was filling up by cracking that valve, like I said earlier. So now he's shutting down that valve and then he's uh, closing off the tank so that tank was open now he's closing it so that he knows that the 3,000 gallons that he just filled up is trapped inside that top portion and then he's gonna ch shut off the hydrant uh, close off the hydrant bleed out all his lines and then he'll be ready and back in operation All right, so that's pretty much it for the pump panel. If you have any questions or comments, you can write it down below, or if you do things differently than we do here, I would love to hear how you guys run your pump panel. Of course, this is a, a, a ARF truck. This is different from um, the municipal engines that you see on the streets. This is made for aircraft, so they're a little bit different, but they can do the same kind of things. Um, as far as that pump panel goes. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.